we're in the heart of Wood Green and behind us you can see um, we've got the Barclay St George uh, development on the old Clarendon Gasworks site. Um, next to that is um, a really interesting part of Wood Green that we kind of term the cultural quarter and it's all about cultural production, lots of creative businesses, workspace, uh, small, small and medium enterprises, um, the home in the UK grime industry, we've got a vegan cheese factory, it's really uh, you know full of production and creativity um, and that is right here um, behind Wood Green Town centre and the council owns a lot of the land there so we've got some really big plans to kind of intensify that kind of uh, creative economy but also build some uh, fantastic new council housing and you can actually see the blue crane behind me uh, that is our chocolate factory site uh, where we're uh, delivering um, uh, new council homes uh, new affordable workspace and a really fantastic scheme and the quality of homes in terms of sustainability, the views that the residents are going to have overlooking Ali Pali. Um, behind me, unfortunately you can't see it uh, right now, is Ali Pali. Um, and then uh, in the other direction behind the camera is Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Uh, and in the distance I can see Seven Sisters and Tottenham Hill, uh, all of which a huge amount of activity is happening uh, here in Haringey. Um, and uh, Wood Green Town Centre itself is a big focus for us. We've we've had a big engagement exercise uh, with our residents and businesses called Shaping Wood Green to really talk to them about what they want to see from Wood Green Town Centre, what their priorities are. Um, some of that's the sort of big and visionary stuff and how we can reuse things like the car park site in Wood, uh, Wood Green Mall. Um, but also it's about getting the basics right and people wanting to see Wood Green Center, uh, Town Centre you know, better managed, we keep it clean and green um, and we really do our best to kind of get people walking and cycling. We are consulting on our local plan and this comes off the back of um, the council's political administration being elected on a kind of manifesto which was all about creating a fairer, greener borough um, and really kind of um, focusing on the delivery of over 3,000 new council homes um, and uh, we are well into that program actually we've got 2,000 council homes on site we've got a site in every ward of the borough uh, they range the projects from big estate regeneration council-led estate regeneration schemes like Broadwater Farm um, through to small infill sites um, as I've mentioned we've got big sites in Wood Green like the chocolate factory site um, but we're also looking in places like Tottenham Hill where we're redeveloping our former depot site at Ashley Road Depot and that's going to be our biggest scheme of about 300 homes. Um, but we're focusing on quality of homes, we're focusing on providing the family homes to really alleviate the housing crisis that we've got in Haringey um, and also providing homes for people to downsize so that they free up larger homes behind. So we're really um, excited and very pleased that we're really progress with that program. Um, the local plan also um, is really grappling with the issues and we have also been doing a consultation around what does an inclusive economy mean uh, in a borough like Haringey. We actually don't have the biggest employment base compared with a lot of our neighbouring boroughs um, but we do have a lot of the real uh, entrenched issues around unemployment but the bigger issue these days is actually around in-work employment, uh, sorry, in-work poverty and how do we get people the opportunities to secure progression into uh, better quality jobs and that's a massive focus for us uh, how do we harness the opportunities we've got to support um, people in that way um, we do want to attract um, really good quality employment and jobs to Haringey but there's also a big question about how do we make sure that our residents are part of London because people don't live within borough boundaries as we know you know there are 33 boroughs in London and we want our residents to be able to access opportunities across um, all of them. So a big focus at the moment is around that inclusive economy um, and that's also about working with small businesses as well. Um, we find that there's a massive focus from our business community on, uh, for instance, our objectives around becoming a greener borough and um, the net zero agenda. How, how can we support them as a council? How can we get those businesses working together? to achieve that end um, and, and those conversations have been really fruitful and we've had a, a really um, high level of engagement on all of that. 
post-COVID, uh, the relationship with Central London is really important. In fact, Haringey is part of Central London Forward, so we're part of the sub-regional partnership with the boroughs like Camden and Islington, where they, they have the real jobs density, I suppose. So we work very closely with those boroughs on employment programmes, on funding, on trying to make sure that you know the young uh, population and the population of people who are furthest away from the jobs market in Haringey can have access to those big uh, opportunities in the knowledge quarter and surrounding areas but I think it's also important to say that in Haringey we've got an emerging and burgeoning workspace sector um, which is really exciting actually because more and more although people will work and want to work part of the time in central London there are more people that also want to work closer to home or at home um, and we're seeing demand for that kind of workspace grow and we've got some really exciting projects in Wood Green like the clockwork um, workspace just down the road from here and um, we're also providing space as part of the schemes uh, that we're bringing forward and we're also repurposing some of our council office accommodation in that direction but the other thing that I think is really important is that we don't just look towards central London um, we have got uh, as I mentioned earlier a really exciting creative economy in Haringey um, and we're seeing that kind of spread out from places like Hackney in particular and uh, demand for space is growing to support things like the film industry and Enfield um, you know so actually when you see a number of our industrial estates in Haringey you might think they look like traditional industrial estates but if you pull back the skin you'll find a whole host of creativity from set design to costume making to you name it it is really interesting to see what is going on um, there and actually the council has a key role um, in, in this because we do own quite a lot of industrial land as part of our commercial portfolio and um, so we are in many cases directly the landlord of these businesses um, or we will have some sort of leasehold interest um, so it does give us an opportunity to invest as well um, which is what we've been doing as part of our capital program. We've been working on the Lee Valley with Waltham Forest, Enfield and Hackney for a number of years now um, and we are seeing huge demand. We've seen a big increase uh, in demand for space, not just from the sort of creative economy uses I've described, but things like last mile logistics. Um, and actually the Lee Valley is really well positioned in terms of transport links, um, in terms of um, not not just rail but also road and also river because uh, you've got the river league going through it obviously as the name suggests um, so it is a key area of focus for us and we've got some really interesting uh, creative um, uh, enterprise zone funding that we're um, putting in place in the southern part of Tottenham in particular um, we are investing in our own uh, industrial estates as I mentioned earlier and we also have um, a, a joint fund across all four boroughs which basically funds business startups um, which is the um, uh, an Upper Lee Valley specific fund um, and it's recyclable so when the businesses pay that funding back we then invest it into new startups and it's been really exciting to see uh, that come to fruition. A good example of that is um, Chuku's, the, Ni the first ever uh, Nigerian tapas restaurant in the world, uh, which is on Tottenham High Road, and it received um, some startup funding uh, from that um, fund, uh, and recently was in the press because Beyonce um, uh, gave them a grant as well when she did her concerts at Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. So it's great to see that when we can put in some startup investment in these local businesses that they go on to thrive and fr flourish in that way. It's, it's really important um, factor around um, providing housing for, for older people, um, partly because also if we can provide bespoke housing that responds to their care needs, it allows older people to downsize from larger family accommodation so it's sort of hit you know is a double uh, bonus for us um, so we've got something in our new build housing program called our bespoke housing program where we work with individuals and families to tailor the accommodation we're building to their specific needs um, and and really make sure that we can do all the adaptations before the residents move in. Um, it has huge benefits for us because it massively can reduce the cost of their care packages. It can often mean that their care packages can be provided in borough 
rather than having to be provided out of borough that people can remain at home for longer um, but also for um, for families with younger um, uh, sort of children and adults with with particular needs as well um, it can allow us to sort of um, uh, free up uh, all our accommodation that we can then you know let people on our housing waiting list so we find that to be a hugely fruitful program we want to continue it um, but we are also within this, the housing program looking at opportunities around extra care and other models as well um, and we're looking to build a new nursing home at Osborne Grove near Finsbury Park um, to provide for a whole range of different um, needs and, and care requirements and for me the big impact of that is that at the moment if you speak to our uh, d director of adult social care she will tell me that we're having to send people as far as Croydon uh, for their care that that makes a difference between having a visit from a family member once a week and being visited every day of the week and I think we all know what we'd want for our own family so I, I really think that providing for that group is, is critical and it's something we, we are absolutely building into our programme. In a previous life, you actually shepherded HS2 uh, into Camden. What, what's your response to what has happened to that uh, at the moment? Um, I, I think it's hugely disappointing that the government has kicked the future of Euston into the long grass. Um, I don't think any major capital uh, transport scheme like this has ever saved money by delaying its implementation. So I think, it, for me, it could lead to a big uh, missed opportunity. But also, who wants to get on a train from Birmingham to end up in Old Oak Common if actually your final destination is central London? Why would you not just get on the existing services that do take you into Euston? Um, and I, I, I think it's so short-sighted. Um, it's a balance sheet decision, um, which is you know really just uh, presentational. Um, but the impact, um, I, I feel quite strongly because you know for many years I worked with local communities in Euston who have experienced the impact. They've seen Drummond Street substantially reduced in size. They've seen a massive, uh, massive trench dug out where there used to be you know, over 300 council homes. Um, they've seen their open spaces disappear um, and actually now they're being told you won't see any of the benefits until 2041 at the earliest. Um, I, I think that's massively disappointing for London. I think it's massively disappointing for the local community in Euston. But I actually also think it's disappointing for the whole country because ultimately I don't think anybody wants this outcome. If we're going to have high speed two, we need to have a world class station in the centre of London. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter, and thank you for coming to Haringey. Uh, really pleased to, to have you visit us here.